Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about K-Nearest Neighbors Algorithm. It is one of the most intuitive algorithms out there, but often people overlook some of the details behind this algorithm because they don't really implement this algorithm by themselves. In this video, I'm gonna first explain the concept behind KNN, both classification and regression. I will also mention some of the important details and at last, I will show you how you can code this KNN algorithm from scratch using Python. If you are new to my channel, then please subscribe. I make videos about machine learning and data science regularly. So let's get started. At first, we are taking a fake data set. As you can see here, this is a typical classification data set. We have two features here, X1 and X2, and we have two classes, red class and green class. As you can see here, I have labeled them also. Now our task is simple. If someone gives us a new data point, we should be able to tell the class of that new data point. Now KNN algorithm is a very lazy algorithm. Yes, it does nothing if we don't provide it some new data point. So let us provide it a new data point. So suppose this is our new data point. Let us look into the zoomed out version. So this is our new data point, okay? And we want to know the class of this new data point. Now the KNN algorithm goes something like this. It's really simple. First, it tells us to choose a value for K. Let's say in this example, I am taking the value of K as 4. Now the algorithm tells us to find k nearest points from our training set around this new data point. Okay, so as you can see, we have four points here: one, two, three, four. Now it tells us to do a voting. Yes, voting of what? Well, voting of the classes. As you can see here, if we conduct a voting, the red class will win because we have three red classes and only one green class. Now the KNN says, whoever wins the voting, just assign that class to the new data point. So in this particular case, this point will be red and the class will be one. And voila, we have just classified our new data point using KNN algorithm. Yeah, it is that simple. Now there are actually a couple of details that I have to mention. The first detail I'm mentioning here, the distance. Well, there are multiple ways to find the distance between two points. Here I have used something called Euclidean distance. This is just the distance formula that you learn in your coordinate geometry class. This goes something like this. Suppose we want to find the distance between two points, P1 and P2. Now, according to our data set, every point can be described by a vector with two components, x1 and x2. So the distance will be square root of p1 x1 minus p2 x1 squared plus p1 x2 minus p2 x2 and squared. Okay. So this is the formula of Euclidean distance. Well, we can do another kind of distance, which is called as Manhattan distance. And the formula goes something like this. Distance between P1 and P2, according to the Manhattan formula will be the absolute value of P1 x1 minus P2 x1 plus the absolute value of p1 x2 minus p2 x2 okay so this is the formula for manhattan distance now there are a couple of more details that i have to mention but i will mention them later first let us see how we can use this knn algorithm to do regression problems okay so let us take a data set for regression problem. So this is a typical data set for regression problem. You can see that X is the independent variable and Y is the dependent variable. And there is a clear relation between them. As X increases, Y increases. So how we can use the same KNN algorithm to find a Y value if we are provided with a X value, okay? 
so as usual let us take a new data point now remember when we are provided with a new data point we only have its x value okay so suppose we are given a data point here so the KNN says find k nearest points around it okay so i'm just zooming in here and we will find four nearest points okay so as you can see we are only taking the x-axis here because we don't know the y yet of the new data point so suppose this is our x-axis and these are the four nearest data points for this given data point okay now here we can't perform any kind of voting because we need a real number value for this y this won't be a classification okay so what we can do well we can do a very intuitive thing we can just average the y values for these four neighbors and that's how we can compute the predicted value predicted y value for our new data point and if we just plot it back in our 2d plot we will see that this data point will lie somewhat like here okay so the x was given and we just computed its y so that's how we can do regression problem using KNN algorithm. Now this was a very naive approach to do KNN regression. A better approach is to use some weighted average. Well, what we can use as weights? Well, a very intuitive thing here is that as we move away from our data point, that is as we increase the distance, the similarity between the data points and our new data point will decrease so we can use the inverse of distance as our weights the formula will then look something like this this is the predicted y is equal to in the denominator we will have the sum of the weights that is the sum of the inverse distances that is distances j and j runs from 1 to 4 because we are working with 4 nearest neighbor algorithm and in the numerator we will have the summation of y j times the weights that is the inverse distances j okay and obviously the j will run from 1 to 4 and the distances are definitely measured from our new data point to the data points that are already present in the data set okay so these distances these distances so that's how we can improve our KNN algorithm for regression now let us look at the effect of higher dimension on KNN algorithm let me scroll down a bit suppose we are working with only one feature that is x1 and our feature space is limited to 0 to 1 okay so the x1 feature ranges from 0 to 1 and we are working with 4 nn and we have got 1000 examples in our training data set and let us assume that the points are distributed uniformly in this range so the expected range of one data point will be equal to point zero zero one that is just one upon one thousand okay so the expected interval to find four nearest neighbors will be equal to 0.004 okay now let us assume we have two features x2 and x1 now you can see that we are dealing with a rectangular space here and again i am assuming that both of the variables ranges from 0 to 1 okay 
Now to find four nearest neighbors in this rectangle, we will need to look into a rectangle of area 0.004. So what will be the side length? Well, the side length is simply the square root of 0.004, which is equal to 0.0632. Now let me increase the dimension to 3. So now we have x1, x2 and x3 and following the similar logic, now we will have to look into a volume of 0 0.004. So in this case, the side length will be 0.159. So you can see that as we are increasing the dimension, we effectively have to look into a larger interval to find the same amount of nearest neighbors given that our sample count remains the same just to put a percentage perspective to it i am going to multiply everything by 100 so in this case we are actually looking into 0.4% of our feature space to find four data points for nearest neighbors actually and in this case we are looking into 6.32 percentage of our feature space in this case we are looking into 15.9 percentage of our feature space for four nearest neighbors but what is the harm in this well the point is as we are increasing our search area we are moving farther and farther away from our test data point which means the nearest neighbors that we are going to find will be lesser and lesser similar to the test data point. That's why the quality of the prediction will obviously be low. Now I want to mention another important point in KNN which is the necessity of feature scaling. Suppose one of your features ranges between 0 to 1 and another feature ranges between minus thousand to positive thousand. So while calculating the nearest neighbors, Kernel algorithm will focus on x2 variable more than the x1 variable. Why? Because obviously the distances get affected by this variable a lot. But this variable doesn't contribute to the distance that much. So the relative importances of the features will be affected. But in the reality, it might be the case that this x1 variable is far more important than this x2 variable. So to avoid that, we need to normalize the variables between a fixed range. Okay, so this was the concept behind k nearest neighbors algorithm. And now we are ready to jump into the code section. First of all, we need some fake data set. And I'm first doing the classification problem. So I'm first generating a classification data set, okay? So I'm using here scikit-learn library and from its samples generator module, I am importing this make blobs class and using this class, I will have my training data set. Well, the training data set will obviously contain two things, our matrix of features and the predicted classes. Okay. So here I am using 300 sample points and the center is two, that means we will have two clusters, so two classes. And the number of feature is two, so our X train will contain two features. And this is just the standard deviation, and this is just the random state. You can use the same parameters to reproduce my results, but obviously you can play with them. Then I'm plotting the data. Well, the plotting code is not very necessary. You can just see it from anywhere. So I'm not going to mention this, how it's done. I'm just going to mention the plot. Okay. So you can see that the blue points represent the zero class and yellow points represent the one class. And these are two of my features, X1 and X2. After that, we are going to normalize our features. As I have mentioned in the conceptual portion, Normalization is very important in KNN algorithm. 
Now there are actually many ways to normalize the features. Here I am using something called mean max normalization and after doing this we will have the values in the range 0 to 1. So the way to do is apply this formula. So suppose x is our one data point and we are gonna subtract the minimum of that feature and we are gonna divide that thing with the difference of max of that feature to the min of that feature. So by applying this to both of our features, we are just gonna normalize our x train. So this will be our normalized data set. And I'm just printing the first five data points as you can see here. All the features, the values of the features are lying between 0 to 1. Okay, now comes the heart of the KNN that is to find the nearest neighbors. In this, we are passing three arguments. The first one is k. In my example, I will be using k is equal to 4, but obviously you can change it. You can even use k is equal to 1. In that case, we just call it nn algorithm, nearest neighbor algorithm. Then we are passing xtr, which just represents the training dataset. And then we are passing the new point. So this function will return k nearest neighbors around this new point from our training data set. All right. So first of all, I am initializing an empty list. Then I am looping over our train data and I am calculating the distance from new point to the data points. Then I'm appending distance and the index of that data point to our neighbor array. After that, we are sorting the neighbor array according to the distance. Well, this is the typical Pythonish way of sorting an array using a key. Now, important thing to notice here, here the algorithm I'm using, the sorting algorithm will take O of n log n time, but there is actually a better way to do this thing. We could use a priority queue, which is implemented using heaps. In that case, finding the k smallest elements will require only O of log n time. So if you are using any library, then chances are in that library, they have used heaps for finding the nearest neighbors. Now we are going to classify our data point using k algorithm. For that, I am using a function here and I have named it classifier. Pretty neat name, right? So the idea is very simple. As we have got our neighbor array, so we are gonna pass this neighbor array in this function, and we are gonna construct another array. I have named it here class array. So this will contain all the classes of the k nearest neighbors. You can see that I am extracting the classes from y train, and this is again a typical Pythonish list comprehension so i am looping over the nearest neighbor array and i am just extracting the class labels then i am doing the voting here so the voting is very easy to do in python i am using something called counter and you can see here i am returning the most common one so one means it will return the most common element and you have to pass this to annoying indices because that's how the data is stored in this counter object. Okay. So after that comes the testing portion. So I am taking a new data set that contains only four points. And remember, we have to normalize them also. So after the normalization is done, we are passing one point to the find neighbors function and it will spit out the nearest neighbor array. And when we are going to pass this nearest neighbor array to our classifier, we will get our prediction. Voila, we have done KNN classification from scratch. Now let us go into the regression problem. Here again, we first need to create our data set. And again, I am choosing 300 sample points and number of features is two. 
and in informative is too that means both of the features carry some importance and i have used a bias of five and random state is 200 again you can use the same parameters to reproduce my results then we are gonna plot the data set and again do not worry about this code too much because no machine learning is involved here this is just a simple plotting so this is our data set and you can clearly see that there is a relation between y and the features x1 and x2 so that's why we are going to predict with our knn algorithm so regression with knn as we have already written a function for finding the k nearest neighbors we are not going to write it that again here i am straight writing the regressor function so it will take the nearest neighbors and this time it will create a y array so here again i'm extracting the y values for the k nearest data points okay and then i'm just averaging them notice that i have used here simple averaging i haven't involved the weighted average here but of course you can be creative and used the weighted average that i have shown you in the conceptual portion and now comes the testing portion again i have taken a new set of data points now this time i'm not really normalizing this because you can see here that the features are pretty much normalized both of them lies between minus 3 to positive 3 so that's why i haven't done this step but i will highly recommend you to do that and see if the results differ okay so i'm finding the results and i'm passing the nearest neighbors to our regression function and voila we have got some prediction and that's how you solve a regression problem with k nearest neighbor algorithm this notebook will be available in my github repo and the link will be in this description if you have liked this video please share this video and comment your suggestions below and do subscribe to my channel thanks for watching